Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. How are you guys? Today we're visiting uh, um, Emily Parker's studio out in California. I hope it's sunny over there. It's really cold over here. Um, I've been following her Instagram for a while now. I can't remember precisely how long, but I found out through Marcel's Instagram, I think, back when she was in Savannah. Um, and I think she was apprenticing. I'm actually not sure the whole story. So we'll hear how she got into shoemaking and leatherworking. Let's see, she is here. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's see how the connection goes. Hello, hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time with me today. Yeah. How are you? I, you seem really set up already in the background. You moved during the pandemic? I don't know. So like, here I'll, like, do you see this? This is, um, <laughs> wow. So this is actually like our guest bedroom that I've kind of, um, claimed as my space temporarily. So I had somewhere to work. Nice. Okay. So during the pandemic, did you move not only your studio, but your home too? No, no, I only moved my house. And so like my, my workshop is, so I have a retail shop in Menlo Park and then I live in Redwood City. And so I make most of the stuff at home and then I, mm -hmm. it off. um, and so I had to move all my machines and my house. So that was, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so you're settling it. But so you know exactly what it's like. Yeah, no, I move a lot. <laughs> so did you get to stay like working during this whole pandemic? Yeah, so it was kind of, um, because I, I ended up doing uh, the majority of the move by myself, like our entire house. Like I only hired someone to help me for about two to three hours, but the rest of it, like my husband needed to work full time. And so um, I just, it took a long time to pack up in a house that we've been living in for 10 years. So wow. It, that's like, yeah, so, um, and, you know, I'm still unpacking and dealing with that, but I set up at least a temporary workshop so I could have my shop open for a couple holiday markets. Yeah. Um, did that, and so I was able to recoup some small amount of money <laughs> during this holiday season. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, my shop closed, my retail shop. Mm. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's too bad. But the holiday is good holiday markets are good like you are doing the i liked um the cute little birds and like yeah so this year ornaments was kind of, yeah this career this year was kind of like unkind to everybody and so like, i don't want to sound like i'm complaining but um i went to europe in january to buy all my hardware from my handbags and it didn't even arrive until early november what? So, yeah. wow wow so, took a, um, a beating to like what I was going to work on and what I wanted to do and so um because it just like it just there was like all these things these hurdles but yeah so basically I still don't have all of my hardware the rest of it's supposed to be coming in January so it took a full year to get wow yeah. so, all right um, well, let's yeah. let's let's cross fingers for <laughs> January and like 2021 you know I think 2021 is going to be kind to us all. I have good vibe. I have good hopes for that. But the, the holiday ornaments were just like a really good use of scrap material. Yeah. So I felt, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about how you got into this. Like, were you always into footwear and leather work? Or like, did you come from a different background? How did you start shoemaking and leather working? So my background is kind of like Ed and I, like, um, I'm sorry, it's Eric from E.B. Norman, but um, so he and I, like, uh, we both kind of have, like, similar kind of backgrounds in the sense that, like, we worked in totally different sectors and then, you know, went down a rabbit hole. Um, so I worked for Social Security for about a decade. Okay. Administration, and I did that. And then I basically had moved to Boston, uh -huh. uh, job opportunity, and from there, I ended up just trying to find things to do and I found a shoemaking class. I really enjoyed it. So then I started trying to take more. Yeah. Um, where did you take your first shoemaking class? I took the Carrie Decker one in uh, New York. Oh, nice. At uh, Marika's and Jesse's place. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So 
so um, that was like maybe 2013, 2013. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. From there, I took a class, it was like a five day stitch down class with Marcel. Uh-huh. Um, and I did talk the entire five days. And on the fifth day, he's like, you, come to have lunch with me. I'm like, what do I mean? Like, like, what do I do with your life? I'm like, well, I'd love to like, quit my job and become a shoemaker in San Francisco. He's like, well, when you're ready, give me a call and I'll give you an apprenticeship. I'm like, really? Wow. Um, and so I told my husband, um, he's like, all right, well, you know, we had, um, so I, I ended up uh, continuing to work for a year, save money, and then I quit my job. And I moved across country to Savannah, Georgia, because we'd moved back to California at this time. Wow. And I worked for him for a year. Um, and so I would try to come home like once a month or so. See my husband. Wow. But yeah, I rented an apartment and lived there for just under a year. Wow. That's amazing. And then, so that's where you <laughs> learned more about shoemaking, hand welting, all types of shoes, cemented construction, yeah, to sneakers. I Definitely, like, yeah, a lot of cemented construction. I did do some welting, but a lot of more of, like, women's kind of cemented construction styles. And then from there, I, like, you know, obviously I had to go back home to California where my husband was living. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you miss him. He was very supportive. Like, I'm, I feel really lucky in that sense. Like, uh, at the time, like, to give people, like, a little bit of background. My husband, uh, like, two years before that, he had, uh, like, a had cancer and things were really like and so we both kind of all oh, like um at the time like you know if things were to get better we both want to like live our life to our fullest and be really happy and yeah. so really supportive of me to quit stop to do this and so I feel really lucky yeah um, yeah wow that's great like and, so and then, then you, Marcel mm-hmm. went to uh, Beatrice Amblard so she worked for Hermes um I went to her her bag making program in San Francisco and then she offered me an apprenticeship and so I worked for her um and I did that um for like six months or so and then uh-huh. uh after that I um started studying with I just tried to like bone up on skills from everybody that I could you know like I went to took a month with DW Fromer the boot maker in Oregon wow, wow uh, that's great study with a couple friends in Europe like you know um there's this guy named Rick Van Putin who has a shop in Amsterdam uh-huh. and, and um, a repair guy. He's, he's awesome. He has a shop in like downtown central Amsterdam. And so um, I studied with him for a little bit and then I have a friend. Um, so yeah, so I started going like just anywhere I could. Um, I studied with Jan Melkerson for a few weeks. Nice. Um, and let's see, I studied with Martin Van Luck, who's in Belgium. Um, I studied with Peter Nitz. Wow. And I studied with Niwa. So I think that's the big one. There was also um, Roel Van Hoff, who's a sneaker guy. He has like the sneaker school in the Netherlands. Uh huh. So, yeah. I, wow. I basically just tried to like get as much knowledge as I can. Wow. That's great. So that's in the course, course of how many years? Like two years, three years that you've been like going to all these places and visiting them um, for like was, oh. from like maybe 2014 through 2018 it was pretty seriously like I was just trying to like get as much knowledge as possible from as many sources um and so then what happened was is after I left um I had I had just kind of recently left Beatrice and Blard from San Francisco and a space opened up and I wasn't necessarily ready. I was looking for a workshop. I was not like, I was looking for a place to like go every day to be able to get out of the house, just a small little like hundred square feet, just mm-hmm. so that I could safely work yeah. and find that here in the Bay Area, like impossible. Right. Um, I found a retail shop and so it was relatively affordable and I ended up moving to a retail space. Wow. So I had no merchandise, was not ready at the time, but I was like, I guess, it's now or never. So, um, yeah. So I opened up my shop in October of 2018. Wow. And opening a shop is like, it's almost like, you know, you're like in like a fishbowl, like, you know, when people can see you work, people just come in. How was that experience? So it's one of those things where like, I have like, I am so grateful for having the space. Um, but 
you are exposed to so many people and like, you know, there's no censors. It's like, you know, whatever they say, like if your price is too high or if they don't like it or they think that you should do it this way. And so that was a bit emotionally taxing on me in the beginning. Yeah. Um, something I've learned how to grow and have a better, like a thicker skin about. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like I have anybody else working for me. And so it's like, I'm the first person to seize their expression. Yeah. Ever, so. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's hard. But yeah, but yeah, that's great. So you build up the store slowly, but like just keeping on making. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, I'm recently trying to change my business model, like, because it's easy to kind of fall into this where it's like, you want to just put merchandise in your sh store. And like, that was never my intention, but it's like, you kind of, I felt guilty having a space and not having full with merchandise uh, and really trying to move back to, which is like, you know, I took, I learned from all these great, amazing uh, makers and um, I have a decent skill set at this point. And it's like one of those things where it's like, I want to get back to making Make. unique individual special items that are, instead of just lots of stuff. Um, so... <laughs> So is it going to become like more made to order kind of model or that I'm going, um, you know, I have about like maybe about eight handbag designs that I'm really confident and that I'm working <laughs> on now. Um, and I've been just waiting for the hardware and like, I can at least start moving forward. I'm, I'm moving forward with a few prototypes. So yeah. Which do you like making better shoes or bags? Okay. I, I feel like um, my answer is like, I don't mean to give you such a long answer, but I always feel like you need to say that you have like 10,000 hours or so to be like considered like, have, I have probably closer to 3000 hours if like, generous on shoemaking. Uh -huh. I'm still confident enough in the shoemaking space to like, uh, but with bags, I feel really confident. I think I've got my 10,000 hours at this point probably. Uh huh. So I feel more confident with bag making. Uh -huh. not, I enjoy shoemaking, but shoemaking is more for my own personal, like, enjoyment. Enjoyment. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's so great. People come into my shop, I usually refer them to, like, a handful of makers that are shoemakers that I feel like they'll be taken care of. Um, uh -huh. I don't want to take an off. Like, I feel like it's people's money is so precious, and I just would never want to take an order that I don't feel comfortable with. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. But then would you, how do you determine if you're going to make it or not? You you just talk to them and if you kind of talk about the design and you're like, okay, I think I can make this, you would take the project or? Yeah. Like I usually just say like, you know, kind of, can you give me some more ideas of what you're looking to achieve? And like, do you have pictures? Can you, you know, um, I have a few people that are might be corporate orders right now. And it's like, I'm really trying to understand like quantities, timelines, budgetary restraints, if there are any, you know, yeah. that is like one, if this is something that's viable for me to do, or two, if I need to like, you know, um, I don't ever want to take a job that I don't feel like I can complete from start to finish. It's more yeah. for a good relationship with people than, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. Any hand tools that's essential for your work that you love? Okay, so there's so many. Like, I'm going to, like, I'll tell you a few that I think are more unique, maybe, that are for, they're more bag making, but they're, so first, everybody, well, a lot of people know probably, you know, your, your filatus, your, um, you know, electric creaser, it obviously makes your products look really sharp. Yeah. So that's that's not, great. But there. This hammer, I think, is kind of unique. So this one comes from France. Uh huh. And so if you see, it's just a straight angle. So yeah. Hammering, where like most hammers that you get are like something like this. With a. With a like you know. With a tail. Yeah. This one, you, when you hammer your stitches, it's it's not hammering it in any direction other than straight. Oh. So, interesting. Cool. You know, the other tools that are, like, for me, like, godsends, like, it's just, um, like, there's a cheap tool that, like, uh, it's from, like, my leather tools, I think, in Korea, I think it's like uh -huh. But, like, these, I'll just show you. So, 
they don't look like anything, but I swear they will make your life so much easier. So much easier. What do you use that for? Like anytime you need to cut like a rounded corner, like so they come in different shapes or like yeah. sorry, different sizes. Uh huh. You know, um, Eric showed the KS whole like whole set kit. I have that. That's amazing. But this is a second tool that I'm just like, how did I go so long without having these? Like to perfectly cut like rounded shapes. Wow. So do you have like tools for bag making and shoe making kind of like dub double up on a lot of things? Not double up, but like you have basically more tools than some some people. Oh, yeah. It's a sickness. It's a real sickness. Um, I have a lot of tools. Like I've, I'm getting to a place where it's like, you know, people will be like, oh, my God. Like, so for example, like, do you see all the different um, yeah. app for my skiving machine? So like, uh huh. The foot for the sky bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, my goodness. And, and the forks <laughs> and the knives. What kind of knives do you use? Well, so the knives I got really lucky with. So I had, like, I had bird lasting pinchers that I got really lucky with. And with my knives, I, you know, I obviously started with the way that Marcel taught me, which is, like, you know, a curved knife. Curved knife, yeah. Something like this. You know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I later kind of moved more to like, like the Japanese style that people use. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, I just kind of use whatever I feel like is, I kind of just interchange whatever the project is and whatever I kind of, my hands over the years have gotten kind of tired. Um, uh -huh. Like, I, I think this is a major maker problem. But like, I just recently, I had to see some doctors for hand problems. And so oh. it's basically have different options um, yeah. for different so it's, you know, like today I might use this to sky something because my hands are hurting in one direction, but tomorrow I'll use a Japanese one. Mm. And so I have to adapt based on, you know. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 And what's your favorite machine? Mm. Do you have many or not so many? Do you do most, most everything by hand? Um, like, so I have my Skyver right here. I have a sewing machine behind me. Uh huh. Um, I have a second sewing machine in the other room, a second Adler that's a cylinder bed. Um, but I would say, like, probably for machines, I mean, my Philatus is probably my favorite one. Like, I, at this point, I prefer to hand stitch everything. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you have like a lot of um, different threads? Like, is that like your another obsession? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, so, and the thing is, it's like, you're always playing catch up, like, you, you'll, like, find, like, what works for you, and then, yeah. and your product will come out, and you're like, oh, shit. like, and then you'll try that, and you're like, this is kind of better, so, for, like, a lot of people, I started out with the traditional French threads, the, uh, yeah. or whatever, I yeah, um, but I was encouraged to try maybe super fine thread, mm. and so I switched over, it's, it's so much more consistent. Um, so I, I like that thread a lot more. So I have a lot of threads. Yeah. Wow. 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 Is it like have linen ones, the waxed ones? Do you have um, nylon? I don't use, I mean, is this? Yes, I do use, I use bonded nylon for my sewing. That's my preference. Um, you know, I have a few different brands that I use. Like, I mean, I have Seraphil, but my favorite is actually like, a no name brand that I buy at Obalter and Sons for my sewing machines. Um, right. It's like, I mean, the, it's originally from, I think, a Massachusetts uh, thread company that's like now become defunct or something like that. Oh, no. Wait. So it was made in USA? And then now, is it like dead stock? Yeah. So, like, I'll pull out my whole idea drawer here. So, like, if you see this, all of this, these wooden spools. Yeah. Stock. I think I paid like a dollar fifty a piece. Wow. And so um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. But once I run out, then I have to find other solutions. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Well, that's really cool. It's wooden spools too. What are you working on now? Like, are you doing bags? Are you making? Well, so I mean, I'm. I it's like, I feel like this huge weight has been left in. Like, um, I finished my holiday, like, uh, shipping on Friday or Saturday. 
Nice. So Tags that I'm currently working on on my desk that's right on the other side. And then that's that's probably what I'm supposed to be at the top of my priority list. It's more for my shop so that next year I can actually have some. Yeah. Do, do you wear <laughs> any of your creations or do you usually like, pat, you know, is, is your creation mostly for your customers? Um, I try to give my friends and my family my products. Uh -huh. um, to get more feedback. Um, there's a few things that I've kept for myself, like the bag that I made with Peter Nitz, I mean, I kept for myself. And like, you know, I, I use a lot of the bags that I've taken classes with as like my personal items. Um, but after that, no. <laughs> you just don't have time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the shoemaker that doesn't have shoes, you know, that sort of thing. It's like, I would love to make my own bag, but it's just one of those things where it's, yeah. I my shop and yeah 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 what's your favorite shoes that you've worked on or boots uh, in class or even outside of class i love greenly boots um Re I mean, yeah greenly boots what's that it's like a hunting type boot um it's i took it off the last i'll show you but like it looks terrible i want to see when when did you make it Ooh, okay that's what i'm telling you like i need to like it's not re put back in the shoe tree um but i made these last year in 2019 with jan melkerson in sweden so uh -huh. this is like my favorite style of boot that i've ever got to work on wow so i had like all these in like plans to make some more of this. like i live in an area that there's a lot of horse riders okay so and I'm just really drawn to this this style of boot. Yeah. Do you ride horses too? No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would own a donkey before a horse. <laughs> and those boots though, are you is it for your feet? Like did you make it? I didn't, but I'm afraid to wear them. They're too nice. Like <laughs> <laughs> And and the shoe tree, was that also a part of like yeah so um the, the the gentleman oh my gosh this is so bad what is his name he's from London, um, england he came down steve yes i'm sorry um so i mailed uh yon all of my measurements and he had steve make me two threes or boot three wow so it's really custom made for you yeah that is that's so nice cool. That's cool. I you really have to make more. <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Like I mean, I absolutely have a plan to do that. It's just this year. It's it just I don't even. Yeah. It went for me. I'm sure. It yeah. Felt yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like really like it just passed. But wait, so it's called Reenly shoe boots, and it's is it like buckles? Or sorry, I want to see it again. It buckles, and then there's a lace up in the in the part in the lower half. Yeah, wow. Okay, like I don't know why I did this like two days ago, and I haven't put it back together. <laughs> and and was that was that all hand welted hand? Yeah, yeah, nice. Any decorative <laughs> stitches on the welt? No. <laughs> I'm pretty basic. I like a lot of like clean, pretty simple stuff. Mm -hmm. In like mm -hmm. the nothing fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Somebody's asked a question. Oh, oh. Somebody asks, when will you be starting shoemaking classes, Emily? Who <laughs> was asking that question? Where are you coming up with the questions? I don't even see where. Oh, there was like a question tab. Oh. Gar Garva shop. Oh, she's such a brand <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know I, her yeah i do um she, she's awesome um so she i i don't really want to go into too much teaching at this point like i still consider myself a, like that gets back to this whole like ten thousand hours like i don't feel like i've put in like enough um i have street cred with like some of my teachers but like i don't have i don't have the confidence and i don't really want to take someone's money unless I feel like I really um, I've put it like I have more chops 
So, um, I, you know, I, I, um, I've been approached to do sandal making glasses. Like I, I feel pretty confident doing sandals and mules and that sort of thing. But, but like when it comes to like a fully welted, no. <laughs> yeah. On to someone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so these boots, other than these boots, you've also done cowboy boots too? I've never made a pair of cowboy boots. Um, well, that's not true. Do you know from I made a pair with him. Those were those were technically cowboy boots. <laughs> and Dude, I did the traditional boot. This is so embarrassing. He would die if he heard me right now. Um, what is that called? It's um, it's also it's it's also um, it's a tie up boot. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah. I'm, I'm and then <laughs> are they all for you? Did you wear any of them? Um. So. I've made things for my husband. Um, I made stuff for my parents, but um, well, someone's the, wearing them. Yeah, the, the classes that I take are typically I just make them for my own size, so that yeah, I yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, Dana from Deep Earthy Boots is Packer. Yeah, yeah, Graham. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, <laughs> do you take clients right now? Like, do you? Yes, I mean, for bag making and for like accessories, yes, I will take on clients. So I have a, a few people that I have pending orders with right now that I need to work on. But um, with with shoes and boots, no, I don't take orders for those at, this point. at the moment. Okay, okay. What kind of timeline do you give for your bags? Well, so it totally depends on like if it's a handbag or if it's like a small leather good like um probably usually four to six weeks is is the time frame that i can work within mm -hmm. um right now i don't have too many orders like i mean i i, I could probably because right now i'm just making stuff for my shop um mm -hmm. so yeah four to six weeks is usually what four i can to do six weeks yeah do you usually like <laughs> sketch like I with bags and shoes it might be a little different but do you usually sketch what's like your process do you sketch first and then make do you make lasts do you modify lasts so with last making like I I've modified only under this like supervision of my mentors um and so like I have never modified a last on my own um with with bag making I I don't really feel the need to sketch. I usually um, see designs that are more like vintage that I'm like, oh, I really like that. And then I just immediately go into the pattern making. Mm. And I'm pretty old school. Like all of my patterns that I do, the way that I do everything is by hand. Like I don't do it on the computer. Yeah. And there's things that are incredible with computers. I wish on, so. Oh, sorry. That's, yeah. You're pausing on me. I think I'm losing you. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Oh, sorry, you're back. <laughs> you're back. But you were saying that you make everything by hand, all the patterns by hand, the old school way, no computers. No, I mean, I recently started, um, so a lot of like bag makers and leather workers are starting to really enjoy using the Cricut. Yeah. Um, um, so I've recently put a few designs into a Cricut which I mean, for me, it was like a steep learning curve to how to put all of my stuff into like, you know, Adobe Illustrator and such. But, you know, so I, I put like my handles and stuff so I can, you know, save some cutting time there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also like your little, uh, the ornaments when it's like so detailed and stuff. Hand cut, those were miserable. <laughs> they were hot at hand cut? Wow. <laughs> Why am I hand and skiving all of these little teeny bits <laughs> <laughs> and what about your flowers you've also done like flowers and detail work on your bags so some of those are made with dyes and then some of them are made with like me literally cutting them out by hand um, I used to cut them all by hand but then I started sending them off to people get to get clicked them. yeah yeah that that's a lot that's a lot easier yeah 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 so for shoes though, do you prefer like hand welted or do you prefer like cemented construction? I, okay. So 
I actually like fully pegged shoes, um, which is going to make me sound like a total, sh like, you know, um, not in any group, but I really like peg shoes. So that was something that I worked with when I was with uh, Jan. Um, yeah. And I, I love the look of a welted shoe. I think it looks gorgeous. Uh-huh. Uh, at this point, like, I feel more confident doing this, a, like, a cemented construction sound, but, like, I love the look of a welted shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> reason i mean i'm sure someone's gonna be like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and what's the favorite process what's your like, what's your favorite process of shoe making and shoe designing versus bags i know you love bags too so it's like it's really hard hard to like pick and choose and compare but you can compare what's your <laughs> the day and how like great you feel at like a certain like like i i enjoy like um, probably for shoemaking, lasting is I find the most fun for some reason. I've always found that part fun. And a lot of that applies for bag making too. Like, or like, you know, I've, um, I would cover rocks and stuff and leather for my shop, like have pet for ox. And like, you're using a lot of the same ideas, like lasting is just stretching leather. Stretching, over. Yeah. Um, and so I probably would say that's probably, I like lasting a lot. Um, but I think I, I enjoy like almost every part of the process. There's not one part that I'm like, oh, this is miserable. Like I like edge finishing, you know, bottom. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you divide your time though? Like what's your say like in a week? Like what, how many days do you work on shoes? How many days do you work on bags? I know you have client work, so that's sometimes priority. Yeah. Like, how, what's the flow like? Do you, like, have time to think about new designs or, like, what you want to make next? And then do you pattern make bags? And then the shop? There's You have so many things. I mean, I would, like, I have a couple of girlfriends that are like, you need to get an assistant. You need to get an assistant. No, I just, I would love to get someone, but it's, I haven't found, like, the right person. Um, like, and, um, so it's definitely a struggle. Um, mm -hmm. my, the, where where my, my shop is, they would like me to be open five days a week at least. They want me to be open from from nine to five. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Because of COVID, I've kind of had a little bit more grace right now of like kind of uh, allowing me to be open by appointment only, which is what I'm doing. But basically, I try to get up and start immediately working on something and whatever feels like the most inspiring for me that day and that sounds really stupid but like kind of like the way that I've been working for the last few weeks um and so I cut all of my pieces out for my handbags yeah and the, um and so I'm just trying to create like kind of a line and then I got distracted in the last 24 hours and decided to cover some silverware and leather for uh -huh. fun <laughs> Cover silverware with leather. Wow. I wanna I'm like curious what it's gonna look like. I wanna see. On the table right now. This is what I was doing last night. I was like, I finished my ornaments. I'm done for the holidays. I'm gonna do something fun for me. Yeah. There see. you go. Whoa. So the cool. fork the last fork still needs to be done, but these ones were stitched last night. So wow. I'm happy. <laughs> That is pretty cool. Can I see the fork part? Like oh, the details sure. of the fork? Oh, cute. Are these all hand stitched? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So this one's the only one that still has not been stitched together. Mm -hmm. So like you can see, I pre-pricked all the holes. Yeah. And so then I just need to stitch it and then cut everything. Yeah. To size. I'm tr trying to look at like proportions. But, like what's the size of the stitches? Oh, this I I cheated. Like I mean, I know this is super small, but oh isn't... really? No, this is big. This is the biggest is. one I have. Okay. So this is like maybe eight stitches per inch. Uh huh. Um, usually I do between, you know, I do about ten stitches per inch. Um, uh huh. But... Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it looks really, really detailed. Like really. Wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> And like so this was just like you know my passion project I was like telling my husband for the last two weeks I'm like I really want to cover our old silverware because we just bought new silverware and I was like yeah. I have this silverware I want to cover the mother he's like what are you gonna do with that I'm like I don't know <laughs> my life <laughs> decoration decoration 
cute though. <laughs> yeah. I like all your stone coverings too. Like it's like perfect for weights, you know? Yeah. There's still like, um there's a guy in Germany that does it and he's been doing it a long time before me, so I feel weird about like posting it because I like I, I I definitely like uh I originally saw it on like the Nordstrom's. Do you remember when Nordstrom's was selling those? No. I didn't know that. God. Oh you you'll have to Google it. Like okay. add potatoes and so oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I think like that's that's just like what leather workers do. They cover let cover everything with leather, you know. So I think it's it's not like, you know, maybe it's not like a as an idea. It's not new, maybe. But I think what you're doing is your own, you know. Um, that's my take on it. How many pairs or how many bags do you work at a time? You were saying you do patterns. You just cut everything. So do you work on multiple at a time? Yeah. Um, so kind of Basically, I have figured out for me, like, okay, so for watch straps, I will do up to eight at one time. Um, wow. For bags, I can't do more than two to three um, because it just, they, there's so many pieces and they take up yeah. the, whole, the whole table and then you, like, end up recutting the same pieces out because you can't find the teeny little... Yeah. Pieces. So um, two to three is max for a bag. Watch straps, I'll do... I mean, sometimes I've done up to 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm kind of out of the watch business now. I've decided that I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, you don't like it anymore. Okay. Like you, you kind of like if you do something too many times, you it, you kind of lose some joy in it. Oh um, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the so watch is like it came and went. It, even though it's it's must be beautiful. Well, what, what ends up happening? So I was selling them mostly off, and what happened was is I would make all of these and. I would only have Apple watch straps and people would come in and like, I would do them in batches. So it was relatively affordable for me and my time. Um, uh, people would come in and be like, Oh, I love this, but I want it for my specific style of watch. And then you have to make a, an individual pattern for their specific watch and you a lot more time. And the prices that I had on my, my watch straps were so low. It just wasn't feasible for me to continue to. Right. And if you raise it, do you think that person would not want it anymore? Or do you think it's like a custom order, so they would be okay with it? I mean, to be honest with you, so my, my client base, I'm still struggling to try to figure out who my client base is. Mm. Um, I retail um, my in, like, in my shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like most people, when they come in, it's, I mean, I shouldn't make this assumption. It seems like people think that because it's made local, it should be made inexpensive. Um, and I, I think that there's some truth to that, but like I, at the same time, like I have to at least pay myself a minimum wage to be able yeah. to, my doors open, pay for my raw material. And there's been multiple times where I've made mistakes where I have priced it so low that I'm not even covering my raw material costs. And I'm like, you know, there's no joy in making something when you're like, you, you're not making, not that I'm doing it for money, but like when you make absolutely nothing and you're just like, oh, I struggled to get all of this work done for the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. to not even cover my material costs. Like I just oh, that's hard because then it's also your time. Yeah, well, struggle is real. <laughs> yeah, but it's been a hard thing for me to figure out, and I feel like I'm slowly getting better. When I say like I'll do custom work for people, I'm like, look, I will charge you a hourly rate, and I will charge you my raw material cost at like at cost. Um, like I know some people like to charge their material costs by two or whatever. I charge it exactly the way that it's invoiced to me from the cannery. I'll bill it down to one eighth of a hide, but then mm -hmm. like, but then I also charge for my time now. Cause that's the only way I found that can work for me personally. I see. I think, I guess I'm just, this is just me thinking from what you were saying is just thinking like maybe the more you do it and the more you repeat it, I think you'll figure out like the time frame that you're going to give yourself because I mean, I'm yeah. Like the hours, it's like maximum. How many hours are you going to spend? You know, I don't know as a consumer, that's also hard to be like, Oh, okay. How long are you going to take? You know? Well, that's like, I mean, I used to always undercome like, Oh, it'll only take like six hours. Then I'm like, it took me 18 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the struggle. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. 
I have like a friend who does kind of like scientifically kind of keep notes of time, really, like almost like a scientist being like just lab notes, you know, and I guess. Well, that's like, I mean, so I started to recently do that where like I have every project that I start, I have like a teeny little notebook like this. Uh huh. Jot down like when I start, when I stop, and then like any notes from like that bag so that I can like kind of go back and look at it as a reference to get a general idea of like what I would improve on the next one and how much time it took because I can't see it all in my head anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pricing is hard, but it, it's all your skills, knowledge, all your travel and like your schooling, like your apprenticing, all these time goes in it's not just the time that you make the product i think so oh it's true i mean like it's you know someone's paying for that all of the knowledge that you've accumulated and yeah so, yeah anyways. yeah yeah anyway i'm rooting for you i know you can do it. i think you got your you're gonna be okay but yeah <laughs> price yourself well so you can continue longer you know you don't want to burn out yeah that's I mean, I, I made so many mistakes my, my in 2018 and 2019 where, like, I would agree to do jobs and where, like, I walked away going, I just busted myself, like, working 60 hours straight. I didn't sleep for two days to get, like, something under their time frame. Like, um, so it's, like, lessons I've learned is, like, one, if someone wants, like, in, like a two-day turnaround time frame for, like, <laughs> whatever, which I've done like you have to charge like an extra fee like rather than be like okay sure i'll do it <laughs> yeah 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 oh, that's hard <laughs> but that's cool though so I, I told lee miller a few years ago like or no this was no there was a there was a talk before and i was like i don't know if i could talk about what i've learned but i can tell people what i have like learned not to do like if that makes sense like i have yeah. made a failure as a yeah. person yeah, but that's something you learn, I think, <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> yeah, do you ever think of having, like, your own line of shoes? Like, like a collection, sort of? Sort of like you said, you have a couple designs of your bags that you're, like, confident with. Do you feel like for footwear, do you want to do something like that, where you have? Long term, yes. Um, I have, like, maybe, like, three or four styles of kind of, you know, I don't know why I feel like, I mean, recently, like a lot of the women's shoes, like I don't like, I like more like kind of masculine, like I like Oxfords and derbies and like, yeah. I like all of that. And they don't really make a ton for women. It's yeah. like, I have a smaller foot, so I can't wear like a small men's shoe. Like it won't, it, they don't it really won't fit. What, what size do you wear? I wear a size seven, which isn't that small, but no. like, but but it's like the men's smallest size is just a little big, right? It's like a, the smallest size that I can get. I'm like, eh, it's too big. It looks silly. It looks clumsy. But um, so uh, yeah, I, there's a few styles of shoes I would love to do, but it's like I that would be like five years out at least. Like I need to focus on the bags and get feel like I get that like a little bit more. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Um, what shoes are you wearing now? Do you wear shoes at home or no? <laughs> yes, I'm wearing shoes because half of this is a construction site that I'm doing. So I'm wearing Vans. Like, I'm wearing Vans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then what's your favorite material to work with? Like, do you work with um, exotics for your bags a lot? Do you... What, yeah. what what kind of leather do you like to work with? You know, recently um, I was part of a group buy. I really like um, this goat from France called Ralma. It's from, that's from the tannery. I really like that um, uh -huh. a lot. Just got like a nice temper to it. And then the all of this leather that I was using is um, from uh, Tannery de Puy. It's like a veg tan, and it just has this amazing temperament. Um, so I like veg tans. Uh, another tannery I really like is uh, from Remy Cariot. They're amazing. They're, they'll work with individual makers like us. And um, so, like, I like their lagoon. It's like a buffalo. Um, and, it's, like, you can almost, like, I mean, it's, it's impervious, basically, to anything. Um, but yeah, I like exotic, too, but I probably prefer to work with, like, cows.
now. Um, cow. Yeah. yeah. And then, I want to see some interesting. I can show you some interesting. Yeah, yeah, I would love to see your space. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going to be so dis. It's it's disappointing, but I want to show. Like, I'll show you that too. But um, you can see. So this is some of the leather that I think is pretty freaking cool. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah, I see it. What is the surface? What is it? This is sheep stomach. This is trike. So like, I have it in like lots of different colors. So like, you can see it. But yeah. and it, it's like 0.8 millimeters. It's super thin. It's like paper. Wow. Anyway, so this is one of the leathers that I just think is gorgeous and beautiful that I picked up on a, a trip once. It's um, different. What's the yeah. size? Like, is it smaller? It, it, yeah. Like, here, I'll put a few on the ground so you can see it. Oh, let's see. Let me flip around. Wow. So. I guess they can tan everything. Wow. It's <laughs> kind of small. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, if you look at my hand, yeah. like, it's not big. It's, like, yeah. you can maybe get a card holder out of it. But uh -huh. they're just, like, they're really unique. Um, yeah. So I'm, like, I'm a huge fan of them. And it's already thin. And yeah. so you don't need, really need to split it for any small leather goods, I guess. Oh, wow, well, no, you have a lot of leather. I don't think you could split it. It's so thin. Like, it's, I mean, it's, like, paper. Like, I don't even know how it would handle it. Um but yeah, so okay, here, I'll, I'll switch around so you can see what, so this is like, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I took over our guest room. And so this You're is super incredible. organized. I love it. And it's so <laughs> sunny out. Oh, oh. <laughs> so nice. So you can see, so this is, would be like the kitchen down here for them. But like, so the crickets there, the, my printer is there. Yeah. I've got two bags that I'm working on here. Nice. Um, nice my big sewing table. machine, mm -hmm. my Skyver, mm -hmm. all, all your like, tools. Different, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of like different like jigs and stuff. Yeah, and, like, like clamps, and this is like a uh, box stitching clamp. Uh huh. Those are the ones that Eric mentioned that are amazing, and then these are the other ones that are really great. I love uh, the tool holders. Like you have <laughs> cases for it. These oh, these are from um. A guy named B. Lim, he's in Korea, and he is amazing. Like, I can't speak highly enough of him. Like, he, oh, he, he gifted me this, which was so generous of him. Aww. So I, but, yeah, so this is the clamp that I use from him. His mm -hmm. stuff is just, it's beautiful. It's art in itself. Um, great. great. Wow. So this is the, my other sewing cylinder. machine here. Mm -hmm. Cylinder arm. You use it mostly yeah. for bags? Yes. It, yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's interesting, like, I just, the walking foot, I prefer the, the other, I prefer the, um, high post. yeah, the post bed much more, like, really, I feel like, yes, 100% better, uh, oh. maybe it's because that's what I was taught on, but, mm. and then you can see my embossers up there, and, nice, um, I highly recommend anybody who makes bags a lot to have at least two. Yeah. <laughs> this was told to me years ago. So like you don't have to change out your dies all the time. Yeah. The top and the bottom. Is it snaps and stuff? Yeah. Or yeah. Those are your snap setters. Snap setters. Mm. And then you can see all of leathers. Terrible. Leathers. Yeah. Yes. And then all of my hardware is basically in like little clear containers so I can yeah. see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, nice, and nice. It's, it's super organized. <laughs> well, it gets less organized in here. So all of my lasts and stuff are somewhere in here. And you can see I, <laughs> I keep every single pattern that I make. Yeah. So I have it like teachers and like then my bags and then like. I, yeah. yeah. So, so with, with each teacher, did you make other than Carrie Ducker, I think you made one pair, but like other, other teachers, did you make multiple pairs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like with Marcel, like, I mean, I spent a year with him. A year. So I just spent, I mean, I spent the first month just learning how to sharpen a knife. Um, yeah. and then I spent, spent like three months working on just patterns pretty much. And yeah. then, then it was like another two, two months or so, or three months of like working on a sewing machine and like only being allowed to use a clutch motor for 30 days, which sucked because it was my first time ever using a sewing machine. That's so. hard. <laughs> That's a hard yeah. way to learn it. But then you go to the servo motor and you're like, oh, I was like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. And then from there, where did I go? Um, he like, so from that, we, 
yeah, then it was just like upper making and then we went just to bottom making for a few more months. I see, I see. Uh, um, I just saw so many la um, patterns. So like you have like, you know, that's, that's a lot of patterns. Yeah, no, it's a lot. That's why it's like, I, I've got all the tools to make. It's just yeah. a matter of time. time. Like, yep. You don't have so, enough time. Yeah, but you can see. So this is I, I splitter. Took, yeah, I took this room down to the studs. My like most of it myself, which, but um, wow. so yeah, those are like, you know, you know those machines. And then this is my splitter over here that I need to get working. Oh wow, that's and beautiful. I've, I've got my finisher. Wow. And then this um, I originally used to click out the pop, uh, my sandal um, soles. Uh, bed pants. Yes, yeah, thank you. But um, I now don't use it for that. I just use it for or um, ostrich leather. Oh, to press ostrich. the quill, the pre to press the quills down flat. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then I keep all my glues in, the, in and there. Wow, you have big space. Are you thinking to spread out and kind well, of? Well, eventually, these two rooms will be mine. That is not my room. I, I don't get that space over there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Wow. That's just temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's my husband's afraid I'm going to take the whole space. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might. <laughs> well, that's, that's so great, though. Wow. I yeah. guess, yeah, well, space is always like an issue. I mean, in New York, I feel like we just don't have space, but it's nice that you have space, especially at home. Yeah, no, this is great. I mean, my workspace, my, my retail shop is, um, I had my land of soul stitcher, in my retail shop in Menlo Park. And I ended up like just recently getting it out of the shop. And it was a nightmare to remove yeah. that like on machine out of that, that shop. Cause yeah. like my like, teeny like L shape and it's, it's a hundred, hundred square feet. I think 120 square feet. <laughs> so it was, it was not fun. Yeah. Wow. Wow, and the land is outsourced. Did you, you have wait? Did you have that in here right now? Did you move it back? No, did you sell it? It's here physically at the house. Oh, on. okay. Um, to to get down to this is the basement. Okay. And to get it here, you have to go down like this steep, like slide. And I was afraid that um, I don't know, I would die doing that. By <laughs> yeah, don't do it by yourself, please. <laughs> I mean. I so, some people might know this, but like a couple of years ago, I was trying to move it off of a, a pallet, the, the land of soul stitcher by myself. What? Yeah. And I'm like shoving it with my feet, like pushing my feet up in the air. And I go through a wall instead of moving the machine. I go through a wall in the shelf unit above it falls off the wall and falls on my head and knocks me unconscious. Oh, so, no. I've been a little bit nervous to do some of these things now. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've moved so many times too, so I know how hard it is. Please, I'm like, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> that is funny. Oh my goodness! Do you have a motto, motto, or like a mantra you live by? I, probably, I mean, I have a few. Can I share a few? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So first, I would probably say this to me as a child, and it didn't mean much to me at the time, but now as an adult. Um, so he used to say illegitimus illegitim tatum cabarandum, which is Latin for like, don't let bastards get down. Oh. And I think it really is applicable to makers and people like, especially if you have to go to markets, have a retail shop, because, you know, you can, you're exposed to all these people and not everybody, like, don't let people steal your joy. Yeah. Um, you know? And so for me, that's something that I've recently kind of been trying to re-implicate my life is yeah. not let bad energy affect mine. Yeah. Uh, and my husband always likes to say, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. Uh -huh. um, and it's one of those, for me, like I have a really hard time posting stuff online because I'm like, oh my God, I see that stitch now. Like I didn't see it before. And oh, uh, else is going to see that. Like, oh, and my husband have done better. So, you know, it's like, I need to be okay with, and so I'm trying to do, that's like another and then the last one is just to like stay curious, keep like learning. And so that's yeah. kind of Yeah. And do you have like other, do you feel like you, you kind of know, mm, went through the list of makers that you wanted to like learn from, or do you still have more that you want to learn from? Oh my God, of course 
there's still a thousand people I want to learn from. Like, right. there's, there's so many amazing people out there. And you're just like, how in the heck did they do that? There's a, um, I don't even want to pronounce his name. Um, he's in Japan. He's a boot maker. And he just makes like kind of like country boots. He gave me a recommendation of a few books to buy a few years back. Uh -huh. so, I them. Um, so his work is just like really clean and beautiful. Um, and now, so, now yeah. with all your like knowledge, I guess you're going to make it your own in a way. It's interesting to know everybody's so different, right? All the methods are so different in a way. Yeah. It really is. I mean, each person that you learn from, you learn like a little bit like new techniques and new skills every time. Yeah. And, you know, the way that, I don't know, maybe the French holder knife is different than the Japanese. Like whenever I went to go like have a short course with Miwa, like I was like, oh, you hold it this way instead of that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to seeing like what you do with all the knowledge you have, you know? I know. It's, the, the goal is definitely 2021. I really want to put a lot more out there in the world and just not be so um, in my head about, like, posting stuff. And, like, I feel like that's one of the biggest, like, hurdles is kind of getting like, emotional. Because you've, I've spent so much time learning from these people, and I, like, really admire them. And I just I don't want to let anybody down. So Right, right, right. If you had, you're like a super studious student. <laughs> um, if you had all the resources available to you and like no worries about life, what kind of shoes would you make and for who? Oh, if I had all this. Okay, what kind of shoes would I make? Uh, I mean. Maybe the boots. <laughs> what? I'm looking at it right now. I mean, I love a green. I love like the style of this. You know, it, I don't know. It looks so traditional and, like, clean. Um, I don't know. I also really like Chelsea boots a lot, and I'd probably just have it in black alligator. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. Do you have a last for it in mind? Or is it, like, like I always see, like, Dana, Dana's um, Chelsea, the alligator Chelsea that she made is, like, super beautiful. And I'm like, yeah. It's like kind of cowboy, not kind of, it is, right? The boy, the, the lass. Wait, what kind of lass would you make it on? I have, I have, a, I have a lass, um, a, a lass that I, what is it, that I bought with, um, it's like Jan Melkerson's lass that I, I purchased. And so I made a pair of Chelsea boots there. Nice, nice. Actually, like, this was now early in this year. I. I have two pink alligator skins that I'm supposed to be making Chelsea boots out of. And I just, I haven't had the time to make them, but that's, that's what I want to make for myself because it's just like totally out there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see. That'll be cute. Yeah. Will you do anything differently? You think like after this pandemic, do you feel like, the shop, it's going to be a little different? Like, it's not going to be open all the time? Or do, do you have ideas about the direction you want to go? I mean, I really want... To, the pandemic has given me a lot of time to think and try to figure out how I want to go forward with my business. Um, I really want to try to do better about making stuff that's maybe simple and clean and just beautiful. Um, and so it just means maybe slowing down a little bit and just really considering what I want for my designs. And so, I don't know, I, I need to get better. I think some of the things, I don't know, this isn't really answering your question, but like I would like to actually start posting more things online, um, doing better product photography. I enrolled in a course because I wanted to learn how to take pictures because I, I stink it. <laughs> well, that's great, that's great. I like, you are a per perfectionist. But like, I was just like, oh, this picture sucks. Like, I need to, I don't want to pay for something. Like, I can't afford it. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, that's good, though. You know, it can't be like iPhone, the best iPhone picks. That's not good enough, you know? <laughs> I, I, I really think it probably, most people do pretty well with their iPhones. I just, my friends are like, you just need to take more pictures. That's what it comes down to. I'm like, <sighs> ah, <laughs> and a good camera, right? But then, you know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You're going to have like a shelf full of good cameras too. <laughs> well, 
I purchased one. And so I had enrolled in this course to yeah. photography. And it was actually a lot of new people in the leather community that had oh. a lot of good feedback, but it's user error. It's all me. <laughs> You're gonna, yeah, no, it's hard. It's, it is hard. But I guess, I mean, you have a, it seems like you have a nice community in San Francisco area, it seems like. Like makers and leather workers. You said you do group leather buys. Yeah, like, well, or like throughout the United States. Um, so like there's the leather discord group that if, for any of your viewers, like I, I highly recommend it. Um, it's just like, it's such a nice kind of community where like they share like a lot of Courses. And like, for me, like, I came out whenever, like, I was having to research everything myself, where like, now I feel like there's just a wealth of knowledge. Um, and so it's nice to like, see a community where like, you can contribute and like, then you can get feedback about other ideas. So the leather discord, uh, great. Um, and then like, from there, like, it's like those, you know, I have friends in like Europe, they're like, hey, I want to purchase leather from Tannery Rue, but they need 100 hundred hides can right and so right. like it, those those some of those were like you know worldwide buys like they weren't mm, i see and then someone would ship it to you from <laughs> yeah nice nice poor soul ends up with a hundred hides at their house <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's so amazing though and then how about like do you, so you were saying you don't take apprentices um i mean like cat that's it <laughs> yeah and it's also now in your home so like it's hard to bring someone kind of in your home but oh, you were saying like you haven't found like the right person yet what what kind of a person would be like a right person like would it be someone who can help you like who's more maker or do more admin or I just need someone who's really open-minded. Um, I kind of have the attitude whenever I take classes that you, uh, it's like you know, this, the stay humble. Like, you know, you, you just basically, you help wherever you think that you can. And um, I just, I don't know, like I haven't met the right person. Like they don't need to have any technique. They just have to be willing to learn. And, uh, and do it, do it your way in a way, like do learn from you. Yeah, and like I, I've, I've only had like you know two potential people, and it just hasn't it just hasn't clicked right. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just like you know, like some people are like, well, this someone told me this way, and I was like, yeah, but this is the way I do it. Um, and it's like, you know, so yeah. it just hasn't really panned out yet. But hopefully, yeah. I can have someone that'll work with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, I think I feel like one day, one day. You yeah. can have some. And where would you like to be in like three to five to ten years? Have you thought that long? Yeah, yeah. Um, my husband is uh, at a business school, so he's all about putting together business. So of course, I have to talk about this. Um, but so he, like, basically, I'd like to continue to stay on the same path. I would like to probably better understand my audience and like my client base. Um, for me, Instagram has kind of turned more into like like me with the maker community. And that's mm -hmm. totally cool because I've met some amazing people and um, through my travels and through social media, so I am so grateful for Instagram having connected me with these people, but I don't really know where Instagram is in the scheme of my business. Right. Um, I hear you. What I should, sh what, what I share on my Instagram and what I shouldn't. And so I'm hoping over the next few years, I kind of have a better sense of how I want to market what brand image I want to portray and so that's what I'm trying to figure out now um, all right that's yeah that's exciting yeah where's the <laughs> what 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 sorry I couldn't hear you I feel like I never got to ask you I couldn't hear you hold on what what did you say oh how's the moving going for you are you feeling <laughs> oh my moving um I did like a power move. I did like three days. I just moved like work 12, not 12 hours, but like, you know, I drove the truck, I unloaded, I just organized and just did it in three days. And then the other small things, I still have like small things to do. I have to put like the table on rollers. I'm going to put all the machine on casters. 
so I can roll it around, that kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I don't have as many people in the studio anymore, so I can't move around things on my own. You, what, you don't want to sit on the floor and move with your legs like me? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to injure myself anymore. So I, I got casters and stuff that I have to attach. I have to take apart the machines and like put the casters on and, put, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff takes time. But, you know, it's it's minor things. So I'll just do that. And I, I'm always getting inspired by everybody's like studios, how like organized you are and like you have the clear bins and like, it's nice to see, you know, once you clear bins are like for me with the with the hardware like that was like I don't know why that for me that was a big deal I was like yeah so much sense I mean one of the girls um who I am um her name is Anne her Instagram handle is like I think it's uh Shatella shoot oh god I'm so bad um, Indonesia and she has the coolest setup for herself so I'll show you really quick I basically am wanting to totally hijack her idea I told yeah her too but so I took out this wall yeah and so you can see only the framing there and then like obviously the HVAC stuff yeah but you can see it goes back like maybe four feet yeah and so I want to frame it out so that I can put leather in vertical oh that way and yeah exactly oh, nice and I'm then sorry. yeah horizontal horizontal yeah nice nice in tubes yeah yeah and so she did that and I was like oh my god that makes so much sense. smart and so incorporate it into the wall yeah yeah so it's otherwise i mean because the leather itself just takes up so much space so much space yeah and you don't want to like ruin the leather like right now i'm kind of having small anxiety because like i have leather sitting on top of leather and right. you know it'll fold oh. and crimson and yeah, and some of them discolor. I don't know if you've had that. Well, only maybe patent, but like patent leather discolors, you know? Really? No. Yeah, I don't or have it, it, it takes the color from the next leather. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. I had that happen with one hide with, um, I mean, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say the name, but it was a, uh, anyway, so it was a white like leather hide and they had stamped the back with their brand and they had rolled it up and when I went to unroll it I just had a huge logo oh, <laughs> on man. one side I was like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah white leather is hard to find the good one yeah um do you source your leathers like globally always just just the best things like you just kind of or do you have local places you can go to too well, so I typically buy most of my leather from Europe because of the tanning process is more healthy. Yeah. Um, I, um, early on, probably around 2015, 2016, I started getting a lot of respiratory issues um, oh. from the glues that I was using. And then I was getting the sensitivity to the leather from like sanding it and breathing it in. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, I just, I became very sensitive to it. So I started using, as researching like, what kind of glues I should be using and what type of leathers. And I'm much like, I, I don't have the same, like, you know, respiratory issues or, you know, irritations yeah. on the hands, all of that. Right. Um, so I, I mostly buy directly from the tanneries and I use a lot of tanneries in France. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably where I get most of mine from. Yeah. And then for once you had those, all those issues, did you also invest in like, um, ventilation and all that kind of stuff like the HVAC you were saying is that for your workshop or is that was that one no, for that's, just, that's just for the house, house. Um, but like I've really switched over like I have like Rinia de Clone and I have the barge glues and I keep them in that that um, case yeah yeah um and I highly recommend getting one of those cases that was like I got that for $50 I was like yes score yeah, that's great <laughs> but, but uh no, I go outside whenever I use those glues and right. I wear a respita respirator and all of that. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm really incredibly sensitive to it now. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I've had issues too before. And then you can also taste it, you know, from like yeah. using it too long. You, it kind of lingers and yeah, it's not good. No, definitely. <laughs> no, definitely not good. Yeah. But do you use water-based glue now? Yeah, so um, I really like for bag making. I use Intercom um, mm -hmm. 1619, I think is what it's called. I get it. I I buy it directly from Italy from the the supplier, um, and then 
for shoe making, I still use Renya. Like yeah. still, I use, still use the toxic stuff because it yeah. works good. Like it just, yeah. um, yes. Respirators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Respirators. If you have a downdraft table. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I looked into a downdraft table, but it was insanely expensive. And so yes. was like, for me, I can't, it wasn't feasible. It wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I actually made one with um, Eddie. I designed it, and then I had I got the parts. And do you know Eddie, the old old bitch and cats boots? Yeah, yeah. I've never met him, but I know him through his social his media. Social media. <laughs> yeah, he's in Brooklyn. So yeah, back in the day, he he um, helped me. Yeah, oh, to cool. assemble it and put it put it together. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, Milkerson. And um, DW Frommer both had like self-made, like had, had created their own downdraft kind of mm -hmm. drying table situations. Um, and so it's like, I, because I have windows here, I'm just like, I can just go outside or yeah. door. Nice. But if I had like, if it was like not ventilated, I would have to find some other option for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so great that you have a window too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking up so much of your time, but thank you so, I love so it. much. So, it's so much. Like it's snowing behind you. I just realized. Is that oh, snow? yeah. Well, this is super from a couple of days ago, but tonight and tomorrow, apparently, we're going to get 18 inches. So, wow. yeah, it, we're going to be snowed in. We'll see. <laughs> I hope you stay warm. Yeah, no, thank you. I want to see how, what kind of shoes you're going to, you know, come up with and make. And I really look forward. I know you're, you know, you're cooking up something and, Mostly right now is bags, you know, but yeah, your leather work. I want to get back to shoemaking. That was my original passion and my love was shoemaking. And then I kind of fell down this other rabbit hole and I want to get back to the shoemaking. It's just, it's harder now that I have a few clients and I have a store. It's just, I'm having to make time to relearn some stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, but do you like having the store? Are you going to keep the store for a little while? Like. I mean, I know this pandemic has been a little hard, you know, it's hard to not be there, you know, and also, you know, that's what yeah, I would um, imagine, but you, you're going to keep it going. I, I was lucky enough that um, my, my lease came up during the pandemic and I was able to renegotiate my lease. Um, so it was a little bit more affordable, um, but it's still, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm closed a lot. Um, and so I basically decided it would make more sense for me to keep it than try to find another space. Uh, yeah. Because it's where my shop is. It is more affordable than a lot of other options out right. there. So right. it's, and yeah. it's also marketing in a way. Yeah. It's visibility. Yeah. I mean, I know that there's a lot of makers that have people come to their homes. I'm just not sure that that's the client that I, I don't know if I want people in my home. Like yeah. I haven't really decided that was, you know, I, I totally respect the people that do, but I just don't know if I don't, if I want people, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is private, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. I, I mean, I would like to take students here, but I don't know if I would want to take my customers, so. Yeah. But yeah. anyways. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, looking forward to seeing and keep up the great work. Your hand stitching is beautiful. It's like, it's oh. almost like meditating to like, see you like just do this you know, work. Sometimes you do like that time lapse and stuff. <laughs> and I know. I need to do more of those. those. Those are fun. It is really fun to see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kiko, for having me. Yeah. I love do this. this is very cool. Oh, thanks for taking your time. All right. All right. I'll you see you. Care. I'll see you online. All right. Bye. All right.